shares in the company they work for. They say that will raise $200 million. They'll place greater restrictions on capital gains tax exemptions, raising, they hope, $700 million. They will more closely align dividend tax rates with marginal income tax for higher and additional rate taxpayers. That should raise $1.2 billion. And they'll cap working age benefits at a 1% rise a year for two years, raising $160 million. And finally, they'll remove winter fuel payments and free TV licenses from richer pensioners. That should raise $125 million. Joining me now from Avi Moore is the Liberal Democrat Chief Secretary of the Treasury, Danny Alexander. Mr Alexander, just a short interview this morning, so let me get straight to the point. You want £12 billion in departmental cuts by 2017-18. Can you tell us what you would cut? Yes, let me uh, go straight to that, which is uh, back in the uh, autumn statement last December, I set out uh, in government a proposal for a further £10 billion of savings in the running costs of government between now and 2017-18. Uh, uh, That's extending our successful uh, programme to the wider public sector. It's making better use of technology. It's getting better value for, uh, for government property. And it's extending successful reforms that join up public services at a local level, like the Troubled Families Programme and the Better Care Fund, to other areas. And, and certainly the work I've done in government suggests that that is uh, all achievable and would deliver uh, the lion's share of this uh, of this money and so, put it into context so, so pure, for the well, current on, financial year when we carry out. out a spending round. Uh, yeah, 12 billion in cuts purely from improved running costs. That's what you're telling us. Well, well of course we'd carry out a full uh, spending round uh, for these two years. Uh, I carried out a full spending round for the current financial year in which we saved 11.5 billion pounds. So this is about the same amount spread over uh, two years. We think that we can find 10 billion of that uh, from improvements in the running right. costs of, of government, carrying on 5 billion pounds a year, which is what we found uh, in this parliament. And I think that's a responsible way, finding the savings in a way that people okay. would expect us to find them. You also want 12 billion pounds in tax rises as part of your fiscal <clears throat> consolidation. But what I heard this morning only amounts to about two and a half billion. So what other tax rises would you have? Well, in fact, we set out um, the, the, the full plan. There are uh, £5 billion uh, of tax rises and a further £7 billion of measures to crack down on tax avoidance and evasion. Well, so let me run you through uh, a few of them. You, 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 you mentioned uh, dividends. Um, that's uh, that 700 million. billion. Uh, that's £1.2 billion on, on, on reform of, uh, of, of dividend taxation. We'd have uh, an additional supplementary charge on corporation tax for the banking sector, raising... Uh, a billion pounds. We would uh, restrict the way in which corporations are able to offset uh, losses against corporation tax over uh, future right. years when those losses are not incurred. We'd have a, a new levy uh, on high-value properties, which would raise about a billion pounds. Ah, but, that, but that doesn't uh, come into bands. that doesn't. Is, that's not part of your fiscal consolidation because you're not saying that comes into. It is actually. It is. It is oh, because so when it would. You get, when does it start? Uh, that would that would come in in the financial year 2017-18. But you meant so, to be. This is for, uh, it would start in April. This is fiscal consolidation. By it would start, in, it would start in April. Let me just ask. It would start in April 2017. The uh, uh, the fiscal consolidation finishes in, in in the financial year and including the financial year 2017-18. So obviously we've got we've got to finish the job of balancing the books by March 2018. So oh. uh, that levy on high value properties would contribute about a right. billion pounds. To that job. All right. Um, uh, and, and, what we've, and what we've done today is we've set out uh, the first four bands. So someone in a home but worth between two and two right, and a I'm half afraid we, million I just, pounds I just have a £2,000 pound charge. I've only got a couple of minutes with you this morning, sadly. I haven't got time to get into all the details. But well, let I me think, just... I think in a sense... But, but I, I want to ask Andrew, another the big, question the, about... The big, uh, and it's this. Uh, so most of the cuts will come from running cost cuts. The biggest chunk of the tax rise will be in our old friend cutting down on tax avoidance. We've still got three billion of welfare cuts. Can you tell us where they'll come from? Yes. Uh, you mentioned in your introduction that we would uh, cap the uprating of benefits to 1% uh, for a further uh, two years through to a April 2018. That's 160 million. Uh, we would restrict... A bit more than that, actually. We'd, we'd restrict the uh, we'd restrict the higher uh, higher rate taxpayers would no longer receive things like winter fuel payments. That's about another um, hundred and fifty million. We would we'd get about a billion pounds from from further measures to tackle fraud and error in the benefit system. So ah. the moment we lose about three and a half billion pounds from fraud and error, we think we could get about another third of that 
uh, back. Uh, we've got a lot of proposals in our manifesto, which you'll see on Wednesday, particularly around mental health, to get more people off benefits uh, and into work. And we think that having a much better, more joined up system between the health service and, and the job centres would help to get many more people into work. And we think that would bring in about, uh, save about another billion pounds a year in terms oh. of uh, okay. unnecessary benefit payments. The Tories uh, have announced that they want to abolish inheritance tax effectively up to a million pounds. They promised that before. I understand that the Lib Dems, you in particular, blocked it in coalition. If you found yourself in coalition again with the Tories, would you block it again? I think it's just the wrong priority, Andrew. I think our focus at the moment has to be cutting taxes for working people, increasing the personal allowance to put more money in the pockets of so, people so on you would block incomes. It. And the, the, Tor the, 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 the Tories' priority is always how do you cut taxes for people who are better off? Our, our, our view is we should help people who are earning money to keep more of the money that they earn. But added to that, there is a staggering degree of fiscal ineptitude that is coming out of the oh, Conservative Party All right, but just answer a simple moment. question, all, Mr Alexander. Well, no, would well, you block it? Well, hold on a second. I, I think that it's very important for people to know that the Liberal Democrats are the only party that set out a plan that adds up, so spelled out in detail, yeah. all of the savings that we'd make to balance the books. The Tories can't spell out their £12 all billion. Right. Pounds, Let's assume all that's right. Spell out Can their you answer the question, of welfare would cuts. you block it? Well, I, I'm saying that I strongly disagree with it. Our priority, and it will be on the front page of our manifesto on Wednesday, all right. is further increases in the income tax personal allowance. Okay. And that's, you know, we've, we've battled hard for those priorities and we've stopped things in this okay. parliament, including cuts to inheritance tax for millionaires, because we've got to make sure that, as a, well as a strong economy, we have a fair society too. OK, I'm still not quite sure if you block it, but let, we'll park that. Uh, finally, did you ever think that when you joined the Tories in coalition these five long years ago, that it would likely result in the near wipeout of the Scottish Lib Dems? I mean, have you gone from Danny Boy to Desperate Dan? No, uh, and I, I don't think that is what will happen because I think that people up here in the Highlands can see, and across Scotland, can see the difference that we have made, that we have a balanced economic recovery, not a lurch to the right as George Osborne is now uh, proposing with secret £12 billion of welfare cuts where he can't even spell out uh, the savings that he would make beyond what is necessary to balance the books, where we've delivered income tax cuts for, for working people, where we've helped on a whole range of other ways too, fuel duty uh, freezes for the longest that we've ever seen. That matters to people in communities like this one. So I'm confident, actually, that when people are faced with the choice between Liberal Democrats uh, and the SNP, oh. the people will choose the Liberal Democrats because they right. want a strong and stable government. Well, you've accused, and you're the only party okay. that can deliver that strength you, and You've accused the, the Tories of being heartless, but you're also, in your own constituency, appealing to these heartless Tories to vote for you to save your skin. That's pretty desperate, Dan. Well, I think that the, the, the Conservatives have been heartless, and you hear that in their proposals again today. I mean, I find it so very striking, Andrew, votes? that they, 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 say, well, they say they can spell out how they're going to fund this inheritance cut, yet they, will, they refuse to spell out the £12 billion of welfare savings. They can't tell you where the £8 billion to fund the health service comes from. If there's desperation anywhere in this election campaign, it's coming from the Conservative Party because they know they can't win, uh, and they're flailing around increasingly desperately to try and find things to bring in votes. But I think that people see that actually in this country we want a strong economy, but we want a fair okay. society too. And the only way you get that is with the Liberal Democrats All in the right. next government. Danny Alexander, thank you very much. Now, after Danny Alexander, the next most senior man in the Treasury is the Conservative, uh, David Gork. He's strategic oversight for the entire UK tax system, so he should be in a good position to tell us how the Tories will pay for all these tax giveaways that are mounting up. He joins me now. Welcome to the programme, Inheritance Tax. How many families in the UK pay inheritance tax? Well, at the moment, it's around about 6% of all estates uh, pay inheritance tax. How many? Uh, but, well, it's, it's tens of thousands. Uh, but what we're going to see well, over the next five years is a significant increase in that because if you look at the OBR projections, we will see a doubling of the proportion of households who are going to be dragged into inheritance tax. And unless the government takes action, we are going to find inheritance tax, rather than being aimed at the very wealthy, which is its original intention, is dragging in households of, of, of relatively...